In this next demonstration of Nix software Viveza 2, I'm going to show how you can use the different control points to grab different colors, different tonal ranges in this particular architectural shot to really enhance um, very, very narrow images and just selectively control how we can enhance this photograph. Here I have it in Lightroom and I have um, a lot of my Nix software products um, also tied to Lightroom because it allows me when I'm working in the workflow of processing things, I can take it into Nick quickly if I need to make some adjustments while I'm in that workflow. Also, you know, it makes sense to work in Photoshop later on, so I have it. I have my Nick uh, software working with both uh, both Lightroom and Photoshop. So in Lightroom here, I'm making my adjustments to get this image as far as I can. And again, anybody who's shot outdoor architectural um, shots, especially when you don't have a lot of time on location and you really can't control the exact time of day you're there, which is uh, the situation I was in here. There was a very specific time of the day I could be there and uh, as you can see we have some sunlight lighting on the garage um, but we're not getting enough sun and enough light into here. Now given the angle I needed to shoot this at, you know, I could have brought in some some strobes or some some flashes or even done some of my flash foo with my speed lights but not from this distance away. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to capture it in camera as best as we can, tweak it a little bit in Lightroom, and then take it into Viveza 2 to finish it off, to do some of the things that we couldn't do with lighting um, at the time. So one of the things I'm looking at here is the sky um, up here in the clouds is a little too bright. I'm looking at my histogram. Basically in here, here through the house, I've got the tonal range pretty close to where I want it to be. But I'm going to just going to pull my recovery down up a little bit, I'm sorry, and I'm just going to pull some highlight uh, detail back in there. And my blacks, I'm just going to take down just a little bit. Okay, now we've got a pretty good looking histogram here. We don't, we aren't plugging our blacks, we're not blowing out our highlights, but you know what? This needs a little extra help. So, we're going to take it that next step, and we're going to take it into Viveza. Now, when we're in Lightroom, it's a little different workflow than when we're in Photoshop. We go to Edit In, Viveza 2. And I'm going to work with the TIFF. I'm going to work with 16 bits and I'm going to go ahead and click edit. Now I mostly have a JPEG workflow. I shoot in RAW and I convert to JPEG. In this particular case we're going to go from RAW and make our Lightroom adjustments to create a temporary TIFF and from that TIFF we're going to process our final JPEG. So I'm going to go ahead and click edit and we're going to let this process a TIFF for us it's going to process that 16-bit TIFF. Again, we want to stay in 16-bit when we're working in a TIFF workflow here. Again, something I don't do a lot of, but when I do work in TIFFs, especially as an interim TIFF, I want to stay in 16-bit, so I, I avoid getting some of that banding that you might get, um, especially when you're working with blue skies and trying to punch them up a little bit. Okay. Um, here I've got a split screen view, so what's on the right is what my adjustments are being made. What's on the left is the original. Um, first thing I want to do is I want to get a little bit of light into um, some of these darker areas of the house. So I'm going to drop a control point here. I'm going to take up the brightness a bit. Now watch what we can do. We can use our saturation slider to get a little more color. We can use our structure slider to start to pop some more detail out of this. I love the structure slider for this particular thing, especially when we're working with architectural or houses or whatever. Um, I'm going to pop a little more saturation in there, just to pop a little bit more color. And let's look at a before and after. Before, after. Pretty cool. I want to get a little bit more light over here into the stone, kind of stone cottage area of the house. I'm just going to take up the brightness a little bit here again. I'm going to take down the size of what I'm affecting. I just really want to affect that cottage. I'm going to use my structure tool again. Try to open this up and bring some more detail in there. A little bit more saturation. I think I need a little bit more brightness. To open that up a little bit. Maybe a little bit more contrast even. There we go. Now we're starting to get something that looks pretty good. Okay. Next thing I want to do is I want to bring some punch back to that sky. So I'm going to drop a control point up here into the blues, and I'm going to take the saturation, get me some nice blue, take the brightness down just a little bit, maybe get a little bit more structure into it too. As you can see, what's happening to my sky 
is pretty cool. So we go from before and after. Before is like there's a little bit of tone, a little bit of blue, but it's kind of blowing out a little bit. Okay, now we're getting a pretty nice look. This could actually be done here. I mean, we want to process this and take this into Photoshop. We've got a little bit of lens aberration here because we had to use an ultra-wide lens. So we're going to fix some of that in Photoshop to kind of bring our lines back in. We've got a bunch of junk here in the foreground that we're either going to crop out or, or we're going to, uh, to uh, clone out. But we take this from a before and after. Let's take a look at this view. Again, how long did that take? Minute, two minutes? We took this from here to here with one, two, three different control points. Now we could go in and really tweak this a little bit more because I feel like we could use a little bit more detail here. Maybe we could take the overall saturation up, which actually you can. Once you have your control points clicked off, I could go over here to the main control panel and take the structure up over all. I could pop the saturation a little bit more and boom, all of a sudden this thing's really starting to pop. So now it's looking like a $2 million home that's sitting on a lake outside Milwaukee. Cool. Maybe we can sell this now. Um, before, I was like, yeah, it was kind of cool, but I think you're missing some of the details of the architecture. So, Vivesa, great for, again, having little micro control points where we can control little tonal ranges, little color ranges, little small areas of the image, and be able to pop a little bit more light, a little bit more structure, a little bit more saturation in to give us an image that has more pop. Once we're done in Viveza, we save and it takes it back into Lightroom and saves it and stacks it with the original RAW. So we'll have a saved TIFF with, this, with all of these uh, adjustments to it. And from here in our workflow, and in my particular workflow, I can process a JPEG out of there. And I can do this all day long, again, very, very quickly, and adjust all these different architectural shots, whether they're out, outside, inside, whatever, and um, get what I really would have liked to have gotten with some additional lighting or if the sun was cooperating at the time. But in this particular case it wasn't and I didn't have that luxury. I can do this very quickly here in Viveza 2.